Okay, here we go. Moment of truth, so to speak. <clears throat> this is week number four. Four weeks ago today is when we started our little test with our products. And we're going to see where our final results are now. <clears throat> um, and then we'll go over and uh, talk about it at the desk. So let's go ahead and start with our Milcom real quick. Um, again, don't seem to be... Maybe a little bit. I guess not. Nothing there going on with the copper. And then this is the gold leaf. And you know what? Looks like it is starting to work underneath the gold leaf. Yep, I see it starting to come off just a little bit right there. So week four, the Milcom starting to loosen up the gold leaf. How about that? Um, all right, let's go on to the ballastol. Let's look at the copper first, see where we're at. Nothing on copper. Looks okay. And then on the gold leaf with the ballastol. And you know what? Look at there. I think it's starting to. Yep, it's starting to lift off a little bit. Oh, crap. It's starting to lift off just a little bit there as well. So ballastol, week four, it's starting to lift a little bit. And then last for the CLP, we had some copper left. Nothing there. It's clean. No problems. And then we'll go ahead and check our little bluing test here with our, um, with our hoppies. Yep, not taking it off. Everything's good there. Let that go. All right, gents, that's it. Let's, uh, let's get over and talk about it, and let's uh, see what our results are. Okay, um, final results. Guys, I really don't know uh, where to start with this. Uh, let's kind of go over a little bit about what happened with it. Now, I don't have the hoppies out here because it was just, uh, I mean, it took them all off in the first week. Um, I guess I should have had the, I, I didn't keep the, uh, the test, uh, the test metal uh, probably should have um, but um, Oppies within the first week sometime uh, obliterated the gold and then the copper it just it just took it right off and so as you remember on that video when I pulled it up it just you know just came right off of it um, so I should have kept those but I didn't and I apologize for that but um, um, the second week didn't see any change <clears throat> in any of the products. The third week is when we started noticing the CLP starting to uh, take the, the gold off. Still no effect on the copper on it though. And then this past week <clears throat> we saw with the Milcom and the Ballastol started to take the gold off. Okay, and uh, but still no effect on the copper on either one of those either. Now. I'll be honest with you a little bit. I'm not real surprised at the, at the gold leaf so much uh, on any of them. The only surprise that we had out of this whole thing was how fast the CLP attacked the gold leaf. Now, here's what I think happened with that. Um, every one of these products is a penetrant. A penetrant? Pen is that even a word? Has the ability to penetrate, okay? due to its viscosity. Um, now I've got a lot of experience with break free CLP because when I was in the Marines that's all we could use. Now I've been out for 21 years almost but that's all we could use. We It wasn't so much now. I think now they've lifted it. I think there's a lot of units I know that use Milcom, some that use Militech uh, and some other products that are there now but when I was in we couldn't use. Well, this is all we could use. We couldn't touch nothing else. And uh, I'll be honest with you guys, I wasn't, I didn't think a whole lot of it then, and I'm not much of a fan of it now, but because I think there's stuff out there that's better, but uh, that's all we could use. But I was surprised at how fast it attacked the gold, because guys, I remember spraying a rifle down with this stuff, and it taking forever for it to, to um, loosen up burnt carbon. It was to the point where when we'd go to the rifle range, are an exercise or come back from deployment or something we check our rifles out from the rifle range and I'll say this now what are they gonna to do to me now we'd walk out in a parking lot bend down between two cars and break out a can of carb cleaner and spray the fuck out of them 
because this just would not get the job done for us and um, we let it all run out walk back in spray them down with, with clp wipe them down real good and turn them in you know and there we are we were done of course you had to clean them for three days after you fired them but the next three days was wiping them off with a rag and putting a little bit more clp on it to re-lubricate it and go on but that's what we did because it worked this didn't or at least not as well so i was surprised at how fast it did it not surprised that it did it but surprised at how fast it did it uh the ballastar and um <clears throat> milcom did about what i almost expected if it was going to have any effect i knew it would be toward the end and that's what happened with it uh, both of these do have a penetrating ability and i think what happened is it got in behind the gold probably uh, attack the adhesive because like I said there was no kind of sealant over over any of this uh, which is really surprising why it didn't mess with the copper and here's my theory on why it didn't mess with the copper this metal that this is that this copper on or its coppers on is a little bit denser probably and I didn't think about this at the time but um, it's still raw steel but it's a cutter it's a cutter for some sort of a, a cutting tool and it's a lot denser probably a lot smoother than I had this and uh, so it's a lot uh, it's probably been heat heat treated to be a lot harder so that's probably why it did not affect the copper in the same way that it did the the gold leaf in this time period if we were to leave it in there longer would it I'm gonna say probably it would uh, but I'm not going to do that for the purposes of this test, but probably it would. Now, this was 100% pure copper, okay? Um, now, a lot of people like to read on the back of Ballastol where it says, cleans and dissolves traces of copper, lead, brass, zinc, and tombat. Well, the key word here, guys, is traces. Um, I'm not a chemist. I'm not a scientist or anything like that, but I did take all those courses when I was in school, and I do have some common sense, and I remember a little bit of this. Guys, traces, what's a trace of something? Trace element of something? As a general rule, this doesn't apply in everything, but as a general rule, trace elements is 100 parts per million or less. So as a reference, if you take a million cups of water, dump it into a vat, take 100 cups of copper and pour it in there, mix it all together that's traces that's a that's a hundred parts per million and it ain't much I doubt you'd even see it okay so that's what it can dissolve very little amounts so that's probably why it didn't affect the copper as much as it was supposed to you guys I'm trying to sneeze sorry but that's um, probably why it didn't affect the copper the way that some people thought that it would have. Um, usually when copper dissolves or something goes at it, it starts to corrode it a little bit. So you'd think that it would kind of get change color in it a little bit. It didn't. That, again, was surprising. Um, so I don't know. that This is telling me that this might not attack 100% copper the way that it does trace elements. Or the higher the concentration, maybe it just takes longer. Uh, like I said, I'm not going for a longer test on this. If you want to do that, by all means. I know you can drop a 100% copper penny in this, and after a couple of days, it will start to kind of change colors. I've done that, seen it. Uh, and the same thing with the hoppies. It'll just blew it over real quick, green it up like it's aging it. But it didn't do it on this, so I don't know. I don't know why. Of course, this didn't have any effect on it. This doesn't have any effect on it, and, and so forth. But that's the results of the test, guys. Um, I did this really as a curiosity, um, not so much for the copper end of it. I did the copper because there's some people that were concerned if they use some of these products on um, on a, a nickel-plated firearm, if it somehow got under the nickel plating, would it hurt it? Based on this results, I would say it probably wouldn't. But again, you want to keep in mind that this does have that this. Um, is said or even flat out says on there it can affect copper uh, trace elements of copper so very little so if you put it on your nickel plated firearm and let it sit would it hurt it you know I don't know I can tell you this right now I would have no problem putting any of these products except for the hoppies naturally it's a solvent I wouldn't have any problem using any of these products on a high-end firearm with some with some pretty um, gold flake on it or something 
because number one you're not it's not like you're dunking it you got to remember also this stuff was dunked into this stuff there was no air getting to it it was not i mean it was as concentrated 24 7 for four weeks as you could get it's not like hold it up spraying it down or wiping it with a good thick coat there's still going to be some air and stuff get to it if it does that it's not as concentrated um so um, I wouldn't have a problem using it like on a silicone rag or something to wipe it down, which I use on silicone rags. This is one of the things I use it on. We use this for furniture and everything else in the world too. I don't use it on my guns as much anymore. I use Milcom products. I did a video explaining that, which I don't think it's up now, but maybe we'll do that video again. Um, but uh, I use Milcom pretty much exclusively now. Uh, but I did used to use Ballastol, and it's... Uh, and, and I like it. Um, one thing that this test did show with this, how fast this tore this up, is, be, is I think the solvent capability in Brake Free is a little bit more aggressive than that in Ballastol. So if you were going to pick one of these, well, which one would you use last? It would be this one. If I had a commemorative firearm, this would be the last thing out of these products that I would use on it. Other than Hoppies, we're not including that. You know, there's other uh, protectants out there, guys. There's a... Uh, Frog lube is one. We're going to test. We're fixing to do a test with frog lube too. I'm curious about something on that. Uh, there's a lot of different silicone rags out there. Um, you know, there's Shooter's Choice. Um, there's what is that? Uh, M M P M P seven or M Pro seven? I think it's got a good reputation. There's a lot of different ones out there. You know, you can use and all this thing. But of these right here, I would not hesitate to use any three of these and wipe down. A firearm, uh, like I said, I wouldn't dunk the firearm in it, obviously, <laughs> but uh, you know, I wouldn't hesitate to, to wipe it on for uh, for a general protectant if it had gold leaf. Now, for if it doesn't, standard bluing, stainless steel, whatever, yeah, all these are fine. It's not going to hurt your guns. No way, no how is it going to hurt your firearms, I believe. Um, and so, um, plus, you have to remember also, guys, this metal, even this up here, was not prepared the way. A firearm is going to be prepared when they put that when they put those fine metals on it. Okay, uh, they're going to have that stuff polished down. They're probably going to have some kind of a base on it, um, um, you know, some kind of like a primer or something, or at least bluing. It's going to ha kind of help seal up a little bit. Uh, so it's going to be a lot better prepared. Probably going to have some kind of a sealant over top of it. So I don't know, but I would assume that they would be a lot better prepared than this. So that's another thing you got to think of. But uh, anyway, guys, that's the that's the test results. So, what does that mean? I don't know. You have to make your own conclusions of it. What I'm concluding of it is this: I think as a general uh, lubricant and protectant, any of these are going to be fine. Um, I do not recommend dropping your firearm in any of them and letting them sit. But if you wanted to put a nice coat on it, put it on a put it on a gun stand and put it in your safe, I don't think you would have any problem. But I'm not telling you to do that. But I'm just saying this is my observations. So the so the test results are what they are. They all did affect the gold after four weeks. They all did affect the gold. They did not mess with the copper. But like I said, that may be because it is the type of metal it's on. And I do believe based on these results, if you left this in there for a lot longer, it would eventually start to affect them too. Not going to do that test. If you want to, please do and post it and see what happens. All right, guys, that's all I got. Uh, we're going to rock and roll now and go on to something else. Thanks for watching. Talk to you guys later.